All right, y'all, welcome back to Coming Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out some combat footage out of Israel and the and the Gaza Strip. So we have four videos, three of them are on YouTube, and then we have one from Instagram. So I'll try and provide as much context as I can, but there has been a lot of intense combat footage coming from the area, uh, and a lot of CQB stuff, as you can well imagine, and a lot of it looks very akin to kind of like uh, Iraq war, like even like kind of like Fallujah style of combat, even with like the tanks and stuff in the streets. So it, it's pretty insane, pretty hectic. And uh, yeah, you can imagine there's a lot of damage to the infrastructure as well, uh, which makes it just look like so much more bleak. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Again, we have four videos. So I'll try and provide as much context as I can. This one has a little bit of a, a video overlay. So that kind of helps as far as like the, the text and explanation. <laughs> He's starting off like right with the explosions. All right, so we got four guys already. I'm not sure if these guys are classified as like um, a special forces or what have you, but the way he's like, you know, manipulating his weapon and even kind of holding it at like a slant there to kind of engage this area shows that he's got some pretty decent time on the gun. And I think that is what, Peck 16 even? Maybe a Peck 15? Yeah. All right, so they're shooting through this. So they're taking fire from this room and now they're just shooting through the wall. Did we just see? Let's see. Yeah, which is kind of scary. I mean, those walls don't look very thin, but I imagine you could probably shoot, shoot through if you hit like the same area a couple times. So even this wall right here, doesn't necessarily provide the best cover, but that corner should be pretty hefty at least. Okay, so yeah, it looks like it's about four guys. Flashlights, again, flashlights are clutch for this kind of environment. But again, you can see everything's kind of torn down. Jeez, look at all those bullet holes. I'm not sure if they set up like, um, almost like a kill hole to just shoot through like this area thing is like leveled man that, that's crazy that was a school oh uh no thanks i'm not going down that Send like a throw bot or like a black hornet or something. Hmm. Yeah, I mean Hamas is pretty well known for their tunnels. Uh, I mean, kind of with the terror tunnels, those got very, very sophisticated even when we were over in Israel. So that was kind of a big problem. So they've kind of perfected that TTP. Uh, I'm not sure if they necessarily had stuff in place already in the Gaza Strip per se. But there is, you know, definitely that, that chance. Okay, I don't know the context for this one because this is all in uh, Hebrew. What's going on? Okay, I'm trying to see. But and I'm not sure if these guys are also classified as like a special forces or not. Again, like very Fallujah-esque. Like people stacking up. Dude, people stacking up in the streets. Golly, this rubble, man. Such a pain in the ass to move around this. And the tank also just kind of chilling right there. Making me super nervous. Yeah, just look at these freaking holes. I guess they're just shooting through the windows now. And the walls. Golly. I mean, if they're taking fire from that room or that floor... Be nice to hit that with like an AT4 or something. A uh, 40 millimeter grenade launcher or something. Small doorway to move through and then super dark. So again, like the flashlights are clutch on the helmets and the, the weapons. Because like having a weapon light is one thing, but there are going to be times where you're trying to cover down an area and also look and check like another area. So having and light on your helmet is something that I don't really do too often, but it is a great tool to have for sure. Jeez. Like 
how can you even move around? Oh, there's like power lines and stuff too. I imagine they're not like active, but. It's this level of combat, it's like super stressful. Moving through the terrain, but also, I mean, look how many floors you have. So many places, and it's just like a giant kind of canalization here where, you know, it's kind of along the street and you have all these kind of high, higher rise buildings. So yeah, it looks very much akin to kind of Iraq stuff, but again, like just the rubble, I don't know. I'm not sure, I, I imagine the rubble was pretty bad in Fallujah as well, but yeah, this looks like pretty uniformly um, kind of decimated in this area. Okay, we've got another one. This one is about a minute long. And again, it just kind of highlights just the stress of moving through these very narrow alleys or streets and just having all these different levels of danger areas that you can get hit from. Oh, dude, he's moving with a, a ruck too? There's no way I'd be doing this with a massive ruck like that. Like, where is he going exactly with a huge ruck like that? That's not conducive for urban combat at all. What does he have in his bag? It's an anti tank. What's all the smoke from? Man, that's gotta make things like. It's like impossible to see. Dude, the rucksack is getting me. Though. Yeah, again, if you get caught like just moving through the, the alleyways. Yeah, I mean, of course you can see they're kind of pulling security, but if you get caught with like, you know, a machine gun or something, starts lighting up the alleyway, then you're going to have a mass casualty very, very quick. So this is why, this is more of like the military operations in urban terrain or like Fibua fighting in built up areas. This is more about like the movement outside of the buildings as well, kind of covering each other, making sure you're covering on as many danger areas as you can, but it's kind of impossible to cover on all of them because there's just a lot like here. <laughs> Oh, there's no way, dude. Having this many people so close as well um, is, is kind of wigging me out, especially since they're fighting up. You know, if a grenade rolls down, it can easily take out three or four guys. At least, you know, not necessarily kill them per se, but make them casualties. So, yeah, trying to do this is going to be tough. This is a very tight stairwell as well. This is like straight out of Fallujah. All you need is a guy with like an M16 A2 or something. Yeah, they got the lasers and stuff and the flashlights. Great tools for sure. Lasers, again, there's like a, a different, there's a bunch of different schools of thought when it comes to lasers in CQB. But yeah, you know, for the most part, it's, it's a great thing to have, especially, you know, if you're talking about night operations, most of those la lasers do have the IR function. And having an IR laser is absolutely a game changer. Yeah, man, this terrain is freaking tough to move in. Okay, now the last one is definitely going to be one that you guys have probably seen. One of the, the newest ones. And it is just the perfect example of kind of implementing some very, very solid CQB tactics effectively. Okay, so this is on Instagram and this is kind of just the best that we can, that we can do for now. But, man, again, it's just... It's just a great example of CQB. Okay, so he is engaging two uh, Hamas terrorists basically inside of this room. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what kind of support he has, but it looks like he's pretty much by himself um, and he's pretty much just fighting from this doorway. This is a very kind of challenging area, a very challenging space right here. He doesn't have a whole lot of standoff right here. So if somebody does you know, start actioning or somebody does start like, kind of affecting this doorway. Since he doesn't have a whole lot of room, again, he's kind of forced to push his muzzle a little bit more into the doorway, um, which is not ideal. Again, there could be potentially somebody on, on this side of the wall that can try and grab his weapon or what have you. Still not probably not gonna work out too well for that dude, but you never wanna be kind of wrestling with somebody uh, you know, if they have your weapon. And again, like just because he's there, he's going to have to like collapse his gun if he really wants to kind of start working around this corner as well. But it looks like he's kind of engaging some guys in this area, which is benef beneficial for him, especially since he is right-handed and he can kind of post up here. But as far as like his only way to kind of break contact or, you know, back out of there, he's going to have to go straight back. He can't 
go on the other side of the doorway and kind of pie across. Um, so yeah, very kind of challenging tight space right now. Okay, so, okay, so engage that guy. And now that he's actively engaging from the doorway, Again, now it's gonna bring a lot more attention to the doorway if there's more fighters, potentially in this area or more to the left or even guys back here. And while he's engaging, again, there's nobody really covering on these danger areas, but you know, he's taking out the threats. That's exactly what he's supposed to be doing at that point. Okay, trying to call com some commands. And then being engaged. Oh, dude, okay, well, that was a great place to, to stop it there. Yeah, so trying to fight back into that cover is very challenging because you can have the dude all the way in the back of the room inside, just like really kind of post it up. He doesn't even need to be in the doorway. He can be in the back of that room, the, the back of that back room, just kind of watching the doorway and just waiting for like a shadow to start coming. He can start shooting through the walls. He can start shooting right as he starts seeing a shadow. And again, just fighting back into that space is very challenging, but you can see here now he was kind of engaged with uh, a, a frag grenade. So the, the enemy combatant threw a frag grenade towards the doorway. And uh, yeah, luckily the wall was in the way, but that's definitely gonna, that's gonna, that's gonna slow you down for sure. Just to try and realize, okay, what just happened? And now again, like, the dude on the inside is probably fine, uh, although the frag looked like it went off on the inside of the, the the building. Although the grenade went off inside the room and it might affect the combatant, the enemy combatant, a little bit with the overpressure, he's still probably going to be fine. So now he can kind of refocus and really post up and, and watch the doorway. And especially now that there's debris in the way, as he is trying to move up to get into that doorway, now he's going to be hitting this debris. He's going to be making a lot more noise and it's just gonna be harder for him to actually get through that doorway. Bro broken glass wood. Now he's engaging, so the dude inside knows that he's still alive. And now you can hear he's fighting his way in. But just great CQB right here. He, so he's pying off this doorway. He knows this dude is here. That's kind of the most pressing thing. He's gonna kind of give up these areas right now because he knows that I know there's a guy engaging me from this room and this is probably my best chance to kind of hit him while he's somewhat stunned by what just happened. And uh, yeah, he does a, a fantastic job pying this off, which is even more challenging because he is right-handed and now he kind of has to lean into it, which is why you see his weapon kind of turning uh, or tilting a little bit. And just like that, he drops it. So it looks like the enemy combatant, so we're gonna watch that again. It looks like the enemy combatant actually fires once at him or something, and I'm not sure if his weapon jammed or what have you, um, but it looks like he fires and then tries to kind of back out. So at that point, um, yeah, it, there's really no backing out of that. So with, with the guy, the person who's actually wearing this camera, again, he's like stunned. There's a lot of adrenaline and it's really hard to kind of stay focused and be like, okay, combat mindset. If I see something, I need to quickly identify if it's a threat and then engage it. At this point, he can probably identify that it is a threat. So once you do start seeing a silhouette of a person, like probably get ready to start engaging like right away. Um, and it looks like the enemy again did kind of shoot first, but um, yeah, it didn't, didn't end up well. I couldn't tell like the little blast that we saw there is kind of hard to tell. All right, so we'll see the grenade effects. So I'm not sure if he heard a grenade. I don't think he did. So he probably really wasn't expecting that or else he would have backed up even more so. I think he only backed up because he started taking fire. And again, he just fights his way in. Okay, he's already showcased. At this point, like, he's kind of at the disadvantage thing out there. So he's making entry. Yeah. And again, you can kind of see the, 
the dude's weapon or something goes up, the flash, and then this guy takes him out. So, yeah, again, like, when you're talking about CQB, this is just a great example of utilizing CQB. Of course, if he had other things to kind of help him out, whether it be frag grenades or flashbangs or, you know, buddies to kind of help cover down or assist in getting multiple barrels kind of oriented on the same danger area, of course that helps. But when you don't have that, you know, you have just great skill, great talent at CQB to kind of keep you alive. And again, you don't need to be a CQB master, but just understanding how to pie off certain doorways, kind of like we saw him uh, when he was actually engaging the dude, that stuff in and of itself will definitely help you. So you're not just kind of running into the room, uh, especially when you're kind of by yourself. It's just not a feasible tactic. So again, definitely some insane clips. And I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot more of these combat clips coming out here in, in the coming months. But again, they all have a, a theme kind of very Iraq-esque, kind of Fallujah-esque, but also just, again, kind of very damaged infrastructure, having to move through that kind of terrain, having to move more in like a mount scenario, not just necessarily, it's not just going to be like door to door in the aspect of kind of flowing from the inside of a building to the inside of another building. There's a lot of stuff that happens in between, a lot of things to cover down on, and that's where really these guys are going to be engaged the most, I feel. Uh, and of course, once you do make entry, for self-preservation's sake, it's going to take a long time to clear out just one building. So you can imagine a block is definitely going to take a lot of time if there are multiple occupied buildings. Again, if you guys have anything to recommend, definitely shoot them my way and I'll kind of do something similar like this. But yeah, these are all kind of short, so I figured I'd watch them all in one go. But there are a couple of longer videos that I have on my list as well. So I do plan on checking those out. But again, if you guys have any recommendations, shoot them my way. You can recommend them down below or you can head over to the Discord and recommend them there. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think about this combat. These guys, you can tell, are very well trained when it comes to this stuff. And, and Israel in general, just judging by kind of my experience working with them when I was over in Israel, the Israeli Defense Forces definitely knows what they're doing when it comes to CQB, um, especially kind of focusing more on the self-preservation aspect. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.